starring Myrna Loy in Angels on Horseback, an original radio play on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. Our play on Cavalcade tonight tells the story against the background of a little-known but heroic work that has been undertaken by a group of determined and courageous women. They are Dr. Mary Breckenridge's frontier nurses, the angels on horseback who are bringing modern medicine and education to the isolated mountain communities of southern Kentucky. The story we have chosen for our star is, of course, a love story. As the lovely Jane Eaton, Miss Loy will play the role of a society girl who finds love and a life purpose among the simple, primitive folk of Kentucky's hills. DuPont presents Angels on Horseback with the Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer star Myrna Loy on the Cavalcade of America. Leslie County, Kentucky, the spring of the year. Along a mountain trail that winds slowly downward into a quiet valley, a uniformed nurse and a young doctor ride side by side, taking their time in the descent, for their horses have carried them a long way today and are growing weary. Well, George, what do you think of me now? Will I do? You were fine with Mrs. Napier, but you shouldn't have laughed at old man Teakettle's mumps. It wasn't his mumps, it was his name, Jeremiah Teakettle. Who ever heard of such a name? Well, that's a very old and respected name in these parts. Teakettle? I don't believe it. You know, I wonder about you, Jane. Are you sure you aren't just doing this work down here for a lock so you'll have some stories to take back to New York? I told you I was never going back, and I meant it, George. And what about that fellow you were engaged to, that society doctor? It's all over between me and Elliot. I meant that too, George. Uh-huh. Why do you say that, like that? Well, in the movies, when a girl quarrels with a man she's engaged to and runs away, he usually comes to rescue her. But this isn't the movies. And besides, I didn't run away. I came here because I wanted something Elliot and his kind of life couldn't give me. And what was that? Well, it's hard to explain. A chance to be useful, something like that. Oh, look, we're almost home. Hi, Lady. Hi, Doctor. Hello! Who's the visitor, Joe? I've never seen him before, madam. That horse doesn't belong at the center. I wonder whose it is. I wonder. Come on, George. Yeah, let's go. Yep. Oh. Oh, there. Yeah. Oh, boy. Evening, Joe. Evening, Miss Eaton. Evening, Dr. Morgan. Evening, Joe. Who's the visitor? New doctor from out yonder. I think I know that horse. How's that? Come on. We'll find out for sure. The boss lady's inside, Miss Eaton. She's asking for you. Thanks, Joe. Well, Eaton, we're getting you up for lost. Hello, Dr. Morgan. Hi, boss lady. Sorry to be so late. Mrs. Stanton surprised us. It was twins. Miss Eaton came for me to help. I hope you can put me up for the night. Well, if you don't mind bunking in with Dr. Jameson. Elliot Jameson? Oh, yes. He's waiting in the other room to see you, Eaton. Oh. Oh, thanks. I, uh, I'd better see him right away. I'll type out my report after dinner, Doctor. No hurry. So her polo-playing knight has ridden out of the north to rescue her. Looks that way. Mm. What's he like? Mm, about the way you expressed it. Breezy, handsome, English riding boots. The kind of a dude you'd expect Eaton to be rescued by. Now, boss lady, I don't like you to talk like that about Miss Eaton. She's been trying hard to do a good job down here. I don't think any of us have given her half a chance. Well, what's she expect us to do? Hire a rumba band to play at dinner so she'll feel at home? Anyway, I guess the boyfriend will take her on back to New York with him as soon as she's impressed him with her Florence Nightingale qualities. Not if I can help it, she won't. Oh? I didn't know it was like that, Dr. Morgan. Well, it is. Just like that. And don't forget it. Here, here, where are you going? I thought you were going to stay the night. Well, there's a full moon. I reckon I can make it over the mountain. I get it. Well, good luck, Doctor. Thanks, boss lady. Good night. Well, well, well. 
Did Eaton get back yet? I wanted to show her this lab report on Mrs. Willis' blood sample. That's her patient, isn't it? Yes, you'll find it in the other room. Oh, oh and uh, tell her I wanted to go the rounds tomorrow with Dr. Morgan. <laughs> Mayor seems to agree with you, Jane. You're lovelier than ever. Thanks, Elliot. Now tell me about New York. Who's your new flame? <laughs> I've talked enough. You tell me, who's this Dr. Morgan you keep mentioning? Why, he's one of our local doctors, Elliot. He's doing awfully good work over the mountain. And uh, awfully fast work on you? Oh, Am I right? Don't be absurd. He's a shy, painfully sincere sort of fellow. He's never addressed a personal remark to me except once. That was today. Did he say, I love you? No. I told him about you. And he said, if it was the movies, you'd be arriving soon to rescue me. Well, how about it? You want to be rescued? You can't bury yourself down here in this wilderness forever, you know. I'm not buried. I'm living and seeing life for the first time, Elliot. You don't know what medicine means till you bring it to a place where they never know it. No. That's why I came down here. I wanted to see you, of course, but... But what, Elliot? What would you say if I told you I'm going back to research, Jane? I'd look for your ulterior motive. No, I'm serious, Janie. Maybe I can still get to be a good doctor. I'm going to try anyway. And this place. Lord, what a laboratory. Are you kidding? Oh, I don't mean the little lab in the clinic over there. I mean these mountains. Think of it. Thousands of people isolated from the outside world and even from each other. A perfect system of experimental controls all set up and waiting for a bright young man like me to come along and start to work. You've come to the wrong place, Elliot. Well, why? I can't tell you in words. I'll have to show you. Will you come along tomorrow? Of course. If you hadn't asked me, I'd have gone with you uninvited. Ah, oh, Jane, come on, relax. Is this any way to welcome your jilted lover? I'm sorry, Elliot. I didn't mean to be ungracious. I'm just tired. Dead tired. Forget everything I said. I should be glad to have you here. We need doctors. We need them desperately. Yes. You do, don't you? Elliot, please. Kiss me goodnight. Just for old time's sake. There. Now let me go. Thanks awfully. Until the morning, then, my Florence Nightingale. Until the morning. How much farther is it, Jane? That's the place just below us. And there's Dr. Morgan. Hey, George! Wait for us! Jane! Where'd you come from? Oh, oh, oh. oh. I'm glad we didn't miss you. Dr. Morgan, this is Dr. Jameson. Glad to meet you, Doctor. How do you do? Dr. Jameson is from New York. He's going to stay down here for a while and help us out. Oh, well, that's nice of him. Well, come on in. Rest your horses. Well, thanks, Doctor. I'm glad you come over this way today, Jane. The news just came. There's an epidemic up at the pass. Same trouble as last year. I saw the report of the one last year, but uh, is this one as bad as that one? Worse. Jane, what a stroke of luck. I thought I might have to wait months before this happened. I don't follow you, Doctor. We don't consider an epidemic to be good luck in these parts. George, he doesn't mean it that way. You see, Dr. Jameson is doing research. Well, Dr. Jameson, maybe we better understand each other right now. There's not going to be any research, plain or fancy, on my patients. We'll just treat as many as we can the best way we know how and pray they all get well. But you probably couldn't get around to all of them anyway. We'll just assume we can, Doctor. Do I make myself clear? Look, we're all agreed on the main thing, aren't we? We want to stop the epidemic. People are dying. People are dying all over the world, so what? We can either learn something from this to help the rest of humanity, or we go out, hit or miss, and maybe save the lives of a few hill people. Now, which is the most important? To tell the truth, Elliot, there's only one thing that's important to me right now, and that's doing what we can do right now to help those people up at the pass. All right, then, Jane, if that's the way you want it, that's the way it'll be. But I think Dr. Morgan and I are going to have to understand each other a little better before this is over. What do you mean by that, Jameson? Nothing. Just that, Dr. Morgan. 
listening to Angels on Horseback, starring Myrna Loy on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. As our play continues, Jane Eaton, played by Myrna Loy, urges her horse up a mountain trail to a cabin that perches on a high ridge high above Hell for Sarton River in the Kentucky Hills. Medical kit in hand, she dismounts, raps on the door of the tiny cabin. Who's that? It's Miss Eaton, Mrs. Napier. The nursing lady. Thank you, Eternal, you come. Is it your least one? Yes, and poor little mite. She's nigh out of her head with the fever. Yes, I see. Miss Eaton? She ain't... No. She's in a coma. You mean asleep like? She's very ill, Mrs. Napier. I'm afraid I'd better have one of the doctors look at her. One of the doctors? Is there two doctors down at the bow now? One's a friend of mine. He's just visiting. Well, as long as he's a friend of yours, Miss Eaton. My sister-in-law come over an hour since, and she says there's a foreign doctor showed up over there. They drove him clean out of the valley with muskets and good riddance. But that was my friend, Mrs. Napier, Dr. Jameson. They didn't hurt him, did they? Well, I reckon not. My brothers usually fire in the air when they ain't certain that you ever knew it. It's a relief. Look, I'll be back, Mrs. Napier. If I can't find Dr. Morgan, I'll bring my friend. You're right, Tartan. He can cure up my least one. I hope so. But she's very ill, Mrs. Napier. It may take several weeks. Well, you go get him. And wait. Here. Here's a silver dollar for all your trouble, Miss. Why, you've paid your silver dollar for the year, Mrs. Napier. For hookworm and belly ache and cotton young, but not for the fever, Susan. Now go along with you. All right. And see you keep her quiet. She must lie absolutely quiet. And don't give her anything to eat or drink till the doctor sees her. Yes, ma'am. I do just like you say. Ma'am. I won't be long, Mrs. Napier. <laughs> Clem Powderly. Uh, mighty fine figure of a gal for a party. <laughs> Will you sneak up on the body? What you want in these parts? Well, I, I heard tell over the mountain that he was uh, right smart of a feverish misery raging up here. So I, I come to help out. Like. Why, you ain't no fitting Dr. Clem Powderly, and you know it. The nursing gal is going to get a real doctor for my least one. Oh. How quick did she say he could cure her up? Maybe two weeks. Just like a thought. Why, for, for a dollar, I could cure her up in a couple of days. A couple of days? Yeah, that's what it said. Right, right to this here tea here. It, it, it's got a printed label. Yeah, and it says right here in print, it says... Oh, this you can't tea. read no more than I can. Oh, well, you, you ask anybody that can. Anybody. Ah! Oh, glory be, she's coming, too. I'm coming, child. I'm coming. Mom, how thirsty. Could, could I have just a mite of a hot tea? No, not just yet, honey. The nursing lady's coming back soon, though. You just try to lay quiet till she comes. Mm. Well, that, that's, that's again the natural law, Sarah. If the child's got a thirst, you'd, you'd best let her have some of this tea. Oh, you hush up, Clem. The nursing lady said not to give it, so I won't. Mom, Ma. Ma, please. I'm like to die in the thirst. No. Don't blame me if she dies, Sarah. Clem, no, wait. I reckon... One cup of your tea couldn't do her no harm. I, I knew you'd show some sense, Sarah. Now put on the kettle. We'll cure this young enough in no time. Oh, oh. This is 
the cabin, Elliot. I'll take your kit. Hurry. Mrs. Napier! Mrs. Napier! Oh, Miss Eaton, did I do wrong? Of course you didn't do wrong. You were just confused. And stop crying. She's going to live, Mrs. Napier. I know she is. Hello, George. Hello, Jane. How did Jameson go, Morgan? Elliot had trouble. They thought he was a revenue. Ah, I heard. I was with a little Napier girl, and I had to get help quickly. Elliot was here. Oh, you needn't make excuses for calling Dr. Jameson. I think he's a better doctor than I am. No, wait a minute, Morgan. Shut up, Jameson. I'm not talking to you. That was hardly a fair question, George. Well, I'm sorry, Jane. I've had a bad day. That potterly fellow, half my patients wouldn't let me in. He was in the Napier cabin. Elliot threw him out. I'm afraid he'll make trouble, George. You're right. He can make plenty of trouble. What do we do? I think the first thing to do is to send Dr. Jameson back to New York. The quicker I can get out of here, the better I'll like it. But I'm taking Jane with me. Elliot, you know I can't leave my work here. Sooner or later, you may have to, Janie. This is no place for a civilized human being anyway. Just what do you mean by that, Jameson? Please, let's don't quarrel among ourselves. Elliot, what do you suggest we do? I mean, if there's trouble. Morgan, did you say this quack powderly had covered about half your territory? Just about. <coughs> then let him keep those patients. Elliot, you don't know what you're saying. Yes, I do. Can't you see? This is the luckiest thing that ever happened. We've got them split 50-50. Check Clem's results against ours and we've got it. We've got what, Elliot? The thing I came down here to find. It's the situation every research man in medicine has dreamed about. It's not quite as simple as that, Elliot. We've worked for a long time to build up the trust of these people, and we're not going to lose it now, not without a struggle. You call it trust when they go over to the first witch doctor the minute there's real trouble? We'll win them back. Besides, there's something so much more important, Elliot. What? Babies. They trust us with them, and that's the biggest beginning you, could, you can make in medicine. Let me tell you something, Elliot. Before the frontier nurses came here... Forty out of every hundred babies was lost in childbirth. Now we lose one in a thousand. That's as good as your best hospital record in New York. Better than most. But, Jenny, I guess... George, do you know who it is? No. Uh, better stand away from the door. I'll see who it is. Oh, uh, uh, Dr. Morgan, now you stand to one side. We don't want to harm you. But well, where's that foreigner hiding? You want to see me, Puddley? Yeah, grab him, boy. Hey, hey, what's this? Oh, oh, oh. Step lively. Bring him outside. Wait, where are you taking him? Uh, not fur. Not yet, that is. I brought some of the boys down from the past. They want to have a look at him. Boys, what do you think of it? Uh, Bring him up. Now, wait a minute. Please. Bring him up, boy. Did you listen to me for just a moment? Get it. Will you be quiet? And stay quiet and listen to me. You're acting like a bunch of ornery polecats. You come here screaming about a foreigner beating up on Clem Powderly. Well, where's Powderly from? Is he a Leslie County man? You can bet your boots he ain't. He's a foreigner himself. Yes. Well, all right, go on home. And Clem Powderly, don't you stop till you get to the county line. Now, you, you can't do this to me. It ain't fair. Mountain folk is mountain folk. Boys, am I right? Yes. 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 Wait. Wait. Wait, all of you. Listen to me. You, over there, Zeb Rainey. Who brought your twins into the world before their time and made them live? You did, ma'am. And you, over there, Jim Scroggs. Who cured your least ones up when they were half dead of the hookworm? You and the other nursing ladies, ma'am. And who gave you the scratches on the arm to ward off the smallpox? You and Dr. Morgan, ma'am. Well, aren't you ashamed of yourselves? I'll bet your wife doesn't know what you're up to now, Zeb Rainey. Uh, ma'am, uh... Please, I wish you could see your way clear, not tell her. I'll tell her and all the other women folk. If you don't go home and behave yourselves, are you going or not? Yes, ma'am. We go peaceful, ma'am. All right. Now, I'm going back inside. I'm not going to look out here for five minutes. But when I do look, I don't want to see any of you here. Good night, and God bless you all. Morgan, I'm sorry to have caused you trouble. I'd better go before I cause any more. 
shake hands? Sure, Doctor. I hope you get what you're looking for. I did. Twice. Both times I threw it away. I guess there won't be any third time, will there, Jenny? No, Elliot. I'm sorry. But, Elliot, you still have your work to do. And there'll be a time and a place for it sometime. Maybe even here. No, Jane. Not here. But I know now here's where you'll be happiest. Morgan, take good care of it, will you? I'll do my best. I... Goodbye, Jenny. Goodbye, Elliot. Still in love with that fella, Jane? No, George. Maybe I never really was. In New York, he seemed different. What, what if you went back to New York? I know now for sure. I never will go back. My place is here, George. Well, don't you ever get homesick? I mean, for the city, the excitement. Excitement? Real excitement is something you feel inside yourself. It's what I felt when the little Napier girl began to breathe normally again. Or what I feel when I slap a newborn baby and it gives out its first big yell, telling the world it's alive. Oh, you feel that, too? Yeah, I, I don't explain it very well, I'm afraid. Oh, but you do. I mean, I've been telling myself I've got to use special words when I talk to you. Not anymore, George. Uh, Dan, I was thinking if uh, you are going to stay here in the hills... Well, I'll be staying on here in the hills. And uh, if you get lonesome over there, why, I'll be over here. I mean, uh, will you marry me, Jane? Of course I will. But, uh, oh, I'm right sorry busting in like this, Doctor. My wife. Time comes sooner than we look for her. She's punishing something terrible. Well, I'd better ride up there with you right away. Yes, well, uh, no offense, Doctor, but you know how women folks is. Miss Seaton had attended her before. I hate to ask any lady to go up there this time of night. It's but... all right, Mr. Rainey. My horse knows every stone on that trail. You go back to her, Mr. Rainey. I'll ride up with Miss Eaton. That's right good of you, Doctor. <laughs> I imagine you're going to see Miss Eaton and me riding those trails together quite a lot from now on, Mr. Rainey. Isn't that right, darling? Yes, Mr. Rainey, you see, Dr. Morgan and I are going to be married. Great day in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and you all had better do as I say from now on, because I won't be a foreigner anymore. <laughs> Now, our star of the evening, Miss Myrna Loy. Thank you, Mr. Collier. It's been a pleasure appearing on Cavalcade tonight in this inspiring story of the work of the Frontier Nursing Service. I understand you've been doing some real-life rehearsal for the role you played tonight, Miss Loy. Is that a fact? The reports are greatly exaggerated, I'm afraid. I am an officer of bundles for blue jackets. That keeps me busy in San Pedro three nights a week. But it can hardly be compared to the work being done by the women of the Frontier Nursing Service. Thank you again, and good night. Next week, ladies and gentlemen, Cavalcade will present the lovely motion picture star, Ingrid Bergman, in one of her rare appearances on the radio. The play we have chosen for Miss Bergman is The Silent Heart, and it's based on an unpublished story about Jenny Lynn by the distinguished American writer, Carl Carmer. Don't forget next Monday, Ingrid Bergman in a new radio play called The Silent Heart. Appearing with Miss Loy in tonight's play were William Johnstone as Dr. Jameson and Kenneth Delmar as Dr. Morgan. The orchestra and original musical score were under the direction of Don Voorhees. This is Clayton Collier sending best wishes from DuPont. This program came to you from New York.
This is the National Broadcasting Company.